Florida's Space Coast. This is your career. Welcome to Your Career. I'm Debbie Featherston, your host, and with me today is Deb Woodrow. She is the owner of Soul to Soul Massage Therapy. Deb, I met you many years ago. I know you can't remember exactly where, but I tell you, I was so impressed with your enthusiasm and your energy. And when I heard that you were a massage therapist at that event, I went, it just fits. <laughs> Thank you. Just incredible. Now tell me a little bit about the journey that your career took to, that led you into massage therapy. Well, I had had a lot of careers, and most recent, before becoming a massage therapist, I worked for um, the government as a baggage agent at Orlando Airport. Mm. And I got injured on the job, and as a result of it, I um, got chiropractic care and massage and alternative therapies versus surgery. Sure. And after getting better and going back to work, I decided life was too short to do a job that was literally killing me, both mm. physically, mm. Um, emotionally, and all of the above. It was very hard work. Um, yeah. So I, at 40, decided to go back to massage school. Oh, that's fantastic. So what's really involved in becoming a massage therapist? Well, it is a lot more intense than most people think. Um, school programs range anywhere from six months to a year and a half depending on how many hours you're putting in, how many days of the week you're going, and the curriculum. Mm -hmm. But at minimum, in the state of Florida, it's between 500 and 750 hours classroom time. Um, there are structured things that you have to do, such as anatomy and physiology. My sister was a nursing student at the same time, and um, my anatomy and physiology was much harder than hers. <laughs> now, pharmacology, I didn't have to do that, but yeah. you learn um, the history of massage. You learn hands-on that every student has to have hands-on in a public clinic setting, at least um, some schools are 50, others are 100, and it can vary, but hands-on experience before they actually release you into the public and before you can sit for your state boards, because it does require a written test. Actually, it's a digital on computer test. Mm. And, um, you know, it's, it's a pretty intense thing. I can honestly say it was the hardest thing I've ever done as far as learning experiences goes. Yeah, yeah. And you've been in this field now nearly a decade. Yes. Right? So what, have you, what do you really find that you enjoy about massage therapy? I enjoy... What keeps you here, <laughs> right? Yes. I enjoy the fact that every day is something different. Um, every person that you have hands-on is there for a reason, and those reasons can vary greatly. Most people think of massage as strictly being fluff and buff stuff, mm. um, and yet the longer you work at it, the more that you study, the more you find what you would like to do, and can transfer into that. For instance, a lot of massage is now being accepted medically. Um, continued education classes, more time in classrooms, working under a doctor, physical therapy, all of these things can tie into making you lean more towards the medical side of massage versus the spa side mm. um, or the fluff and buff stuff. Okay. Um, so I, I just every day get something different. When a person calls for an appointment, it's not just how much is it, come on in, I ask questions like, what are you looking for? What's your goal of your session? Is this a one-time thing? Have you ever had a massage? These are the things that most people don't stop and do. They simply book the appointment and figure we'll deal with it when they get there. So before a person comes to me, I want to know that I'm indeed the right therapist mm -hmm. for them and that they're comfortable with me both professionally and personally. Because yeah. you're going to be spending an hour with them in a very um, personal, close setting. Right, absolutely. So there's a variety of different specialties within massage therapy. Yes. We hear about that. Can you tell us a little bit more about the different specialties? Mm -hmm. When you go through school, you primarily learn the touch, the side of massage, hands-on. Usually there's two distinct things, such as Swedish, which is more towards relaxation. The Swedish side is, of course, in the history of it, kind mm -hmm. of where it all got its start. And the therapeutic side, which would lean more towards medical or deep tissue, but in school you're generally learning basic Swedish. Some schools offer advanced training programs where you put in additional hours and come out with higher skill set. So that's kind of the two main areas of massage. When you get out, you have to take continuing education classes. Um, every two years when we renew our license, we have to have a minimum number of uh, classroom hours, both live, hands-on hours, to continue to renew our yearly or bi-yearly license. Mm. So specialty-wise, that's what continuing education classes are for, and they can be common ones like pregnancy. It sounds so simple, but a woman with a big belly in front of her can't get on right. off the table in the same way. There's a lot of health um, restrictions, contraindications and such, so learning how to work with different people. Um, right now, one of the 
big areas, of course, is um, PTSD. And there's many, many studies that have been done both with the VA administration and private companies um, how massage does work to deal with and cope with, and in some cases alleviate or control, post-traumatic stress disorder. Wow, I had so no idea. There are specialties to that. Those are usually a little more intense because, again, that is more of a psychological issue than a yes. physical issue. Mm -hmm. But that trust and that ability to be able to be calm and be on a table and be quiet and, and not have that fear or have that knee-jerk reaction that comes along with the um, PTSD. So it seems like maybe part of that would be helping them to get more in touch with how they're feeling and their, and their reaction. Yes. Um, socializing comes a part of it because it can just be triggered by nothing or by anything or for many of them it's just a constant mm -hmm. daily thing that they live with. Yeah. So that would be definitely a very advanced specialty. Um, there's sports massage. Um, this is one where unfortunately in this industry men get discriminated against. Guys don't want to be touched by a dude and men don't want their woman touched by another guy. So oh. a man that gets into this field many times has to pick a specialty whether it's advancing in medical Sports massage, let's say they're an athlete, take your favorite sport. If you play it regularly or belong to an association, boom, there's your market right there. Sell yourself to the people that you understand. You know those yeah. body types. Right. Uh, you know the injuries that can come across. So that's just a few. Um, there's many, many different skill sets uh, that different people have developed from their own touch. And from that, you <coughs> get a following. Um, there's um, Eastern which is like Thai massage that okay. involves a lot of stretching and movement. Mm. So there's a whole um, world out there of some that are unique and different, to say the least, and others that people ask for by name, hey, do you happen to do this modality? So how does somebody, you know, while we're on the subject, let's talk a little bit about how somebody would actually choose a massage therapist, even though this is really about careers in massage therapy. Mm -hmm. I still think, you know, to have some insight about what, clients would be looking for from you would help right. you to be prepared to have that conversation or maybe in your marketing? Mm -hmm. Marketing is real important. Unfortunately, in this industry, so many therapists just advertise because I don't want to say they're desperate for business, but they haven't found their niche perhaps. Mm. Or maybe they're in an area where literally, yeah, I kind of want to take everybody that walks through my door, small mm. communities, mm -hmm. um, private communities, or even seasonal areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, your marketing can say a lot about who you are and what you do. Um, questions to ask, first thing you want to know is that they are indeed licensed because there are people out there that will say they do touch therapy or I was a massage therapist. There's a lot of people that are truly not licensed in this industry. Doesn't mean they're going to do harm, but legally you can't charge for it unless you're licensed. So right. a license number should be on all printed material or mm -hmm. if someone says to me, hey, what's your license number? I give it to them because they can go to the state site and look it up and verify and see my history and my licensing. Yeah. just like you would a medical doctor. Yeah. What percentage of massage therapists tend to start their own business versus go to work for an established company? Well, I think it's a gradual. Um, when you're looking at it long term, they say that 50 to 70 percent of massage therapists are self-employed. Self-employed can mean you work as a contractor for mm -hmm. other services that send you out and you have your own location. Um, maybe you have a day job and do it part-time. So 50 to 75 percent is a mixed field, but at least half when they go to school say that, yes, eventually I want my own business. Um, most of the time, you don't go straight out of school and start your own business. You kind of need to get in the industry, learn a little bit about um, the legalities, the terminology, um, everything that you can possibly glean from the jobs that you take. My first job <laughs> was in a spa that was just an insane kind of place and I basically learned everything not to do. Um, that's the <laughs> kindest thing I can say. Um, and then I went to work for a chiropractor, which he was the chiropractor that had actually treated me mm. after my injury and um, learned a lot about um, terminology, medical billing, um, all of the things about the human body, the parts that hurt. And mm -hmm. would get a lot of, can get a lot of referrals from chiropractors because of the fact that I do understand what they do. I've been a patient on a chiropractic table and that can help me attract. If they send someone to me, they know that I understand when they say this is what I've done for this person, right. what to work with and what to do. What do you think for somebody that's new and starting mm -hmm. uh, in the business, what do you think is the greatest challenge that they may experience? <laughs> this is actually an easy one and I think it's common with most people when they start a business mm -hmm. is pricing yourself at your true value. In okay. school, they still teach get out there, the best way to get people is be inexpensive. Hey, I'm brand new, here's a special. And that, that's fine. And in the beginning I made that mistake, but the problem is if someone starts at that price, 
They never understand the perceived value of what you do. Right. Um, but that is overall something that's common in many, many industries. Health and beauty is the same yeah. way. Hairstylists do the same thing. Any um, service-based industries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So learning to price yourself is very hard. And um, many of the franchises and chains do price battling, so to speak, but they can. They have the big bucks behind sure. them. They generally hire individuals right out of school, which is great because everyone needs to start somewhere. But when they get out and then want to get more than that, it can be an awkward transition. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. pricing. <laughs> yeah. So what about the the uh, uh, massage therapist that goes to work for an agency? Mm -hmm. What might be some of the challenges? You indicated that you really apparently didn't have a very good experience there. <laughs> Um, when you go to work for an agency, it's funny, you, until you're a business owner, you often don't understand why you were paid the way you were paid. Um, a common structure is 50%. So if, if they're charging, let's say they're charging 60, mm -hmm. uh, the therapist is probably getting anywhere from 40 to 50% of that. Mm -hmm. But the other 50%, of course, is paying for that company to market you to keep your booking full. Sure. It's paying for the linens, the lotions, the structure, the facility. And a lot of therapists get in, well, I'm only getting half, and they think it's so easy, and they walk out to get their own. And then when they start paying those bills, they realize, wow, this wasn't as easy as it seemed. Mm -hmm. So I would advise anyone working for someone, learn as much as you can from them. Ask questions. Most people are willing to share their experience. Um, if they're a reputable business, they're probably even happy to hear that you have aspirations. Um, if you're good at what you do, they may want to keep you, mm -hmm. especially if you're a popular book therapist, mm -hmm. and they may increase your pay scale to something that you find more palatable. So mm -hmm. stepping out right away on your own is a wonderful thing, but it's not as easy as it sounds. You need right. to have some savings put aside, um, have a clear plan of action. Yeah, yeah, and it'd be nice to have an established a book of business. Yes, yes. Um, men, most people, I think, that want to open a business transition often from being a mobile therapist to having a location. It can give a price break. For instance, mobile therapists cost more because there's more involved. We're taking a table to you. We're yeah. bringing everything to you. And um, the mistake often thought is all my mobile people will come to my location. That's not the case. The people that want to be worked on in the privacy of their home and the comfort of their own home, they don't want to get in their car and drive somewhere and come yeah. to you, even if it's less costly. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to make that transition, you need to be sure that you either understand what your clients truly want or be prepared to do both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what suggestions would you have from a marketing perspective? You know, just if I'm going to run this business, it seems to me that the biggest challenge would be I've got to increase my visibility. People have to know yes. that I'm here and they have to understand the unique value that I bring and the specialty, right? Mm -hmm. I did a lot of guerrilla marketing, <laughs> which mm. guerrilla marketing, I always see the little guerrilla, but guerrilla marketing is inexpensive shoestring marketing. Right. Right. Um, it comes down to, you know, they talk about politicians having to shake hands and kiss babies. Mm -hmm. As a massage therapist, it's dragging your chair to a public place, offering five minute hands on, yeah. introducing yourself, things like farmer's markets. If your friend has a business, a retail store, hey, can I set up in your store? Yeah. A bar, can I go in during happy hour? You just, there are some restrictions where you can and can't go with a chair, right, right. but being visible so that people remember you as, hey, wait, I saw you Friday night at so and so. Yeah. Um, going into the schools, donating a lot of time works very well too. There's always mm. charitable agencies that would love a gift certificate to raise funds. It brings you a new client because someone that's socially conscious is probably the yeah. type of person that would see the value of a regular mm -hmm. massage or at least enjoy that side right, of it. Right. So picking yeah. and choosing. I was just thinking when I was in the Midwest, I had totally forgotten about this until this just this moment when you were speaking, it popped in my head. I remember working for a company on contract mm -hmm. um, and they brought in a massage therapist yes. for their people. Mm -hmm. And they set them up in a private yeah. area and they even extended it to me. I didn't take uh, at that time, but you know, I think yes. I was just busy, you know. And chair massage is yet another completely different than mobile and different than location. Right. The corporate side of chair massage is great. Companies see the value of what it can do both for the stress levels of their employees yeah. and even for the physical. Um, in the time that I've been in business, I've done um, factory workers, yeah. where when you have a repetitive motion that you're constantly doing that all day long, those are the people that need the hand work, the body work. And um, many companies will either pay or allow you to come in that they have a sign-up sheet. There's a lot of different business ways to do it, but um, your chair can win you a lot of table clients mm -hmm. as well. It's an opportunity to showcase what you can do, talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, establish that comfort level. Yeah, yeah. 
So, you know, what are some of the employment opportunities for a new person entering this field of massage therapy? Wow, there is so many employment opportunities out there. It's just a matter of either deciding what you want to do or literally getting that first job. Like any industry, the first job's the hardest to get. <laughs> um, your big franchises, as I said, are a large employer of recent graduates. Not to say that they don't keep many people that have experience, because like I said, if you build a booking for yourself, they want to keep you there. Mm -hmm. So they're going to work with you to try and figure that out. Or if you need benefits, many places offer benefits. And if you're an individual without health insurance, working for a chain or a franchise that offers it may indeed be what you need. Right. Um, medical offices, uh, mm -hmm. chiropractors, most chiropractors can bill for it. So their patients love the treatment post-adjustment or pre-adjustment. Um, there are literally beauty shops and salons in every corner that have back rooms. <laughs> back rooms, that sounds funny, but have a space where yeah. someone may rent for themselves or where they may offer it on an on-call basis that they can come in and work on people when they mm -hmm. want. Grocery stores. Uh, if you've been in Whole Foods, Chamberlain's, many of them have up front chair massage okay. for their customers. And for some people, Mother's Day out, she's like, I'm going to the grocery store, honey. And while they're there, they get that 30-minute chair massage. Oh, wow. So those are places as well. Um, schools often get calls for graduates. You know, we're looking for someone to start. We're needing someone to fill or even volunteer opportunities that can lead to employment. Mm -hmm. So depending on the person's approach, they might say, wow, I'd really like to do that. I'm willing to give my time in hopes that I can get into this company or get into this line of work. Yeah. You know, what about the relationship? We were talking about this before the show, uh, that you know, that, that um, you know, physical therapists sometimes will say to, to an individual, mm -hmm. you know, you ought to be, get a massage yes. in conjunction with the physical therapy. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. I mean, that, that maybe there's a good way, right, when I think about networking and just mm -hmm. increase exposure and referrals. Yes. Referrals, face-to-face um, -face is a great way. If you can touch, play, touch, touch base and get in touch with the right person, um, with medical practices, it's usually the practice manager. Yeah. Um, the doctor themselves, if it's a small practice, sometimes you can knock on the door and get yeah. to meet the doctor. Um, going in and taking your literature or your marketing material to them. Um, there are associations that freely allow visitors. I've mm. been to the nursing associations mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there is actually an association of nurse nurses that are massage therapists that they are dual licensed to do two oh, things. Wow, okay. There is actually same way for the physical therapist. Mm -hmm. Physical therapist, many physical therapists are massage therapists, that they're dual licensed so that they can do both the physical therapy and the massage therapy. Mm -hmm. So looking for those associations or networking groups that deal with medical professionals. And I was thinking about the healing process because I remember, yes. you know, um, needing uh, some physical therapy for a while and the physical therapist said, oh, mm -hmm. if you work with a massage therapist in conjunction with me, we could make so much more progress. And he was so right. If you think of it like a building, you've got the structure, which is the bones, and then you have the support beams and the support, which would be like your walls and your drywall, which are your muscles and tissues and ligaments. Mm -hmm. So if you have someone working with the underlying structure, you also have to work with the support system. They kind of go hand in hand, much like a chiropractor will adjust the structure, mm -hmm. and then you will massage the tissues that are mm -hmm. a part of it or attached mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. What have you found today um, I, let's just kind of, uh, you've been in the business nearly 10 years, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you've seen some real changes. What oh, are yes. some of the changes or some of the trends that are present today or that you've seen in the last couple of years that you think anyone new coming into this industry need to be a, aware of? Well, I think the biggest uh, change is the growth. Some would say it's positive, some would say it's negative. I think any time that you have something that is in the media pretty much on a daily basis, in sometimes good, sometimes bad ways, but any time something is brought to light is it's not scary stuff, it's not just touchy-feely, it's not all fluff and buff, but it has real use and purpose. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, the opportunities are opening so much more for people. It's not, um, you don't even have to get um, disrobed or unclothed to get massage. Right. Many practitioners um, work strictly on clothed people, mm -hmm. those that are doing stretch, because obviously with a sheet on a table, if someone's not clothed sure. underneath that, you're not exactly going to be able to stretch their legs comfortably yeah. or bring their arms up. Mm -hmm. So there are mm -hmm. a lot of types of massages that you don't have to disrobe. That's why mm -hmm. chair is so popular in introducing people to touch. Mm -hmm. They're comfortable in that chair. They're fully clothed. And right. once you've established a client relationship, then they may be open to getting on a table. 
Um, so I think that that more opportunities is a good thing. Um, Self-care of yourself as a therapist is very important. Yeah. The burnout rate is very, very high. It's about 50%. Mm. Hands, um, repetitive motion. Yeah. You can't do 40 hours a week. And when you are first out of school, you're often in a workplace where they book you back to back to back. And that's kind of like you wouldn't want to run three marathons in a day. Right. And you just can't continue to do that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get frustrated and burn out and leave the field prematurely. I have wondered. How do they take care of themselves? You know, so maybe getting a massage yourself. And that is the number one thing that they yourself. should do. But that is probably if you ask the average therapist when their last massage was, it would be more than a month and typically three to six. I myself, I'm proud to say I get one every other week. I trade with another therapist. And I think that's part of what has kept me 10 years at it, yeah. um, diversifying and keeping yeah. myself healthy um, twice a week with a trainer. I'm no sports guru or anything, but that movement that controlled movement and working on the parts of my body that aren't functioning as, as fully as I think they should be. Yeah. So self-care is is a must. Maintaining strength yes. and muscle tone and such, right? Absolutely. So that that uh, is good. What about a person who's really interested in massage therapy? Maybe we have a viewer who is really interested in massage therapy and thought about it. You know, how do they go about choosing a school? What are some of the criteria or credentials that they should be using to assess Choosing a school is tough because there are so many out there right now. It's a very lucrative industry for educators. Um, just like anything else that you would be investing in, whether it's your time or your dollars, um, do your homework. Uh, go to the state sites and look at the school's pass-fail rate for their medical boards or for the test that you have to mm -hmm. take. They should be willing not only to show you the school but to take you in, let you sit in on a class, let you speak to instructors. I also strongly recommend getting a massage or getting more than one, talking to that therapist, asking them about their journey, how long have they been in it. Um, my experience oh, was kind of smart. strange. Um, when I first started, the first person I talked to said to me, we have too many therapists in this town already. I don't know why anybody would want to do that. And I just was kind of like, you know, what do you say to that? And the funny thing is we've become friends, and I, I know their sense of humor now, but they weren't really being mean. But realistically, at the time, that was how they felt. Mm. But, um, you know, obviously with both of us still being around and still being in business, that was just how they felt at the moment. But um, talking to therapists, um, yeah, like I said, checking out the school thoroughly, um, it's, it's public record what their pass-fail rates mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. And a lot of schools start a program, they don't succeed with it, they close that program down. Um, if, if their number one thing is trying to get you to sign up and promising you financial aid, that should be a little bit of a warning sign. It's important, but yeah. that shouldn't be the first thing that you're looking at. Um, in choosing a school, that can be important. I had to go in the evening because I had to keep a day job. Mm -hmm. And I had two schools that the one I really wanted to go to, unfortunately, only took full-time students. Oh, okay. And they didn't have a nighttime program. So I went with my second choice. Mm -hmm. No regrets. It turned out to be a very good school and still is in business today and has a very high pass-fail rate on mm -hmm. the uh, state boards. Is there some type of a certification that the schools have to maintain that, that would be part of the decision? Um, I'm not sure what it's actually called, but they do have to have, I believe, a 75% or higher passing rate for those state boards. In other words, you've often heard a school has to teach the subject. Right. That school has to teach the subject. They know what's on those boards. Um, it's a rotation of uh, a set number of questions. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they teach that. There's some great review classes, like any field. There's books in the bookstore that have CDs. Actually, everything's digital now. No more books. <laughs> I'm old school. But those, I like the books. Yes, me too. <laughs> um, sometimes taking a review course at a school other than your own can be helpful because the way they teach might be different. But there are many things to do to guarantee that you pass that. It's a scary big thing. And even if you fail it the first time, you just got those wrong questions, the ones that you were your weak points. Don't give up. Take it again, mm -hmm. because some of the best therapists I know didn't pass it on the first time out of the cage. Mm -hmm. so. What makes a massage therapist really successful? So, so someone trying to, to determine, hmm, you know, I need to determine whether this is a good fit for me. Yes. What are some of the things that that individual should think about, right, consider when choosing, you know, a profession in massage therapy? You want to be a problem solver mm -hmm. because everyone that's coming to you generally is coming with a problem. Sometimes it's simple. They're overstressed. They just need an hour of quiet yeah. time without yeah. the kids and, you know, worries. But a lot of times figuring out from what you've learned in your education, if you're not sure how to fix it, either looking up 
or sometimes even referring out. There is yeah. nothing wrong. I have a very solid book of referrals that when I get someone that it either is not my specialty or I feel they need intended extra care, referring them out to another yeah. practitioner, whether it be a chiropractor. You know, the ability to not be so self think you're the mm -hmm. best. The, I mean, I am great. I won't deny that. <laughs> I didn't last this long being not good, but knowing when to say when. I can't right. solve everyone. I'm not the perfect therapist for everyone. Mm -hmm. So being able to accept that and deal with that. Um, you must be a people person. I'll never forget in school, the brother and sister, they didn't want to work on fat people. I'm like, well, welcome to America. <laughs> Two thirds of us are fat. So <laughs> I'm sorry, you're not going to be a good, good fit for the massage. Or I don't do feet. Well, I'm sorry, head to toe. That is, people love their feet worked on. You yeah. stand on them all day long. They really, really do oh a lot gosh, of work for the, the body. All the nerve endings in those so feet. So you can't be afraid of that. Yeah. I mean, those are, are silly things, or it sounds quite silly, but it's a reality check when somebody is halfway through their school program and goes, you know what, I can't stand the thought that someone would be a certain blank, whether yeah. it's, you know, a, a certain type of person that yeah. they don't want to touch or yeah. just something that's their little pet peeve, like I don't do feet or yeah. <laughs> smelly people. I mean, <laughs> it's gross, but it happens. You yeah, know, it it's happens. life. Some people are running and then they yes. come in to see you and Absolutely. didn't get home to get when that you're... shower beforehand. <laughs> so true. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you for being my guest and providing such a wealth of information on the subject of massage therapy. You're welcome. It was a lot of fun and it was a pleasure. Thank you. Well, on behalf of my guest and everyone here on the set of Your Career, thank you for watching and remember, be career happy. More information about this program is available online at millermediagroup.org.